In this video, we'll compare interlocking compressed earth blocks or ICEBs in short and machine cut stone blocks. The two are walling materials and you may be wondering which is the better option between the two. Should you go for ICEBs or stone blocks? I'm Nick Moyama and let's try to answer that question in this video. There are four components that make up ICEBs. They are 1. The interlocking component, 2. The compressed component, 3. The earth component, and 4. The block component. Starting us off is the interlocking component. These blocks have interlocking grooves that make connecting one block to the next one easier and faster. The interlocking component also removes the need to apply mortar between the blocks which, as you've guessed, is a major advantage with ICEBs. The second component is compression. Compression gives the block its compressive strength, and to achieve this, the manual or hydraulic interlocking machines are used. The manual machine requires physical labor to produce the blocks, while the hydraulic machine uses either fuel or electricity for its power. The third component is soil. Soil forms the largest component of ICEBs. For example, a typical mixing ratio between cement and soil is one bag of cement to six wheelbarrows of soil. The soil obtained from quarries is usually fine in nature and most contractors here in Kenya prefer to use it. It's usually gray in color, which resembles the color of stone blocks. With that said, you can as well use the soil on your site. Red soil gives a red color to your blocks, while gray soil gives a gray look to your blocks. The only soil that isn't compatible with ICEBs is black cotton soil. It shrinks and swells in volume, which damages the blocks. The fourth component is blocks. There are three types of ICEBs. One, the straight standard format block that is usually six inches in width. Two, the wide format block that is 9 inches in width, and three, the curved format block that is usually used in circular walls, septic tanks, and water tanks. It's also good to note that there's another component called stabilization. Stabilization is achieved by the addition of cement to ICEBs. Because of the chemical properties of cement, it allows the soil to bond together within each block, giving each block its structural strength. Without the cement, the blocks would just crumble and fail. Here in Kenya, machine cut stone blocks are an extremely popular building material. These blocks get their name from the machine that cuts them at the quarry. They are obtained from natural stone and are cut into three thicknesses. One, the four inch block. Two, the six inch block and three, the nine inch block. The thickness you want is determined by your project's design and your budget. These blocks are usually gray in color, but this can depend with each individual quarry. In this section, we look at three different aspects you need to consider before making your decision. One, there's the aspect of aesthetics. Two, the aspect of your budget. And three, there's the aspect of practicality. Your wall greatly influences the overall appearance of your house. An ICEB wall will give a different look to a stone block wall. 
Let's assume that you don't want to plaster and paint your entire exterior wall. You want to achieve a stone or icy look to your home. So choosing between the two boils down to aesthetics. How you want your house to look like. An icy wall won't have a cement joint in between because of how they interlock. Which is not the case with stone blocks as they require mortar to hold them in place. You can also achieve a brick-like look if you decide to use red soil to make your icebs. With stone blocks on the other hand, they can be sanded to achieve a smooth look to your wall. You can apply some black paint between the joints to create an interesting contrast between the blocks. All in all, consider how you want your house to look like because these two materials will give different finishes for your house. Your budget plays a major role when choosing your construction material. With stone blocks, where your site is located greatly influences how much these blocks will cost. That's because of transport. Remember, these stone blocks are heavy with a 9 inch block weighing the most. So if your project requires lots and lots of blocks and is located far away from a productive quarry, then you're going to incur lots of transport costs. This factor can really stretch your budget and on the unfortunate extreme end can cause your project to stall. The same with ICEBs. Even though they are more affordable, you'll still need to budget for them properly. You'll need to hire an experienced ICEB contractor, import soil to your site if yours is black cotton soil and buy cement for stabilization. You'll also need to decide between using the manual or hydraulic machine. The hydraulic machine can produce over a thousand blocks on a productive day, while the manual machine can make between 200 to 400 blocks per day depending on your labor productivity. It is cheaper to hire the manual machine, but the hydraulic diesel powered machine produces way more blocks per day, which ultimately saves on time. Another thing, stone blocks are generally bigger in terms of surface area than icebs. This means you'll need less stone blocks than icebs to cover the same area. So that's an advantage of stone blocks which affects your budget. The third aspect of practicality is an important one to think about. For example, if your project is located within an arm's reach of a quarry, then it makes sense to build using stone blocks. Once they are extracted at the quarry, it's only a matter of loading them onto lorries and bringing them to your site. Because of, of your location to a nearby quarry, the cost of transporting these blocks to your site will be much less. If you want to build using locally available materials, then it's more practical to use ICEBs. You can use the soil excavated from your foundation to prepare ICEBs. You can then hire an ICEB contractor who will come to your site with this machine and make the blocks for you. This helps you save on transport costs. Also, ICEBs are a good fit for residential projects like your house for example. They'll make your wall stand out from the ordinary stone blocks. When it comes to affordable housing, interlocking compressed earth blocks are in my opinion the best fit walling material. As long as you use the soil that is available at your site, it's an affordable way of making blocks for your walls. Yet, despite the benefits of ICEBs and other alternative building technologies, they are not as popular as machine cut stone blocks here in Kenya. And in my opinion, I think the main issue is the negative perception alternative building technologies, which includes ICEBs, have. So in an effort to try and educate you and inform you of other alternative building technologies, I know it's not easy to adopt such kinds of materials for your upcoming project. But if you'd like to learn more, I did make a video a while back on ICEBs that you can watch in the following video. Thank you.